Hi there! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a pretty soutache button. So, let's get started. For this button, I will be using a stepped ring mold. We have two types, stacker molds and plastic molds, in a variety of sizes. I will add the details of each that I'm using here in the description below. The stacker molds are in two parts and need to be glued together. A clear drying PVA will work fine. Leave to dry thoroughly. The plastic is a one piece but with a similar profile. I'll use the plastic one today. Using a small piece of tape, tape the end of the braid to the back of the button. Bring the braid to the front in a straight line from the top, up and over, and then through the hole. Move along slightly, about the width of the soutache, and repeat, keeping the soutache in a straight line on the face of the button. A stick makes pulling the soutache through the hole a little easier. Continue around the ring. Wrap tightly, but take care to ensure that each wrap is as straight as possible. This will leave a gap on the outer edge, but the braid touching on the inner. Tweak the placement as you go if you need to. When the first layer is complete, secure the braid at the back using sewing thread, then trim the soutache. If you are making a single color braid, it's still a good idea to add a little bit of stitching for this layer, just don't cut the soutache. Now secure the second color to the back of the button with sewing thread. This layer will be placed in between the previous layer in the same way. So, work in a straight line up, over, through. At the outer edge, the braid will sit on the mold and on the inner, it will overlap the previous layer. Adjust any lines that have moved as you go.
Secure the second layer to the back of the button with sewing thread and trim. The rose center uses two lengths of braid wrapped over each other. This is easiest if you stitch the ends side by side, then tape or pin this end to a fixed surface. Now take one over the other, working down the length. So one, then the next one over. Keep the braid flat and try to get the twist close together. This can be adjusted later on as well. When you've worked the length, pin the other end. Now, roll the sewn end onto itself, leaving a small tail and stitching the base of the twist to hold it in place. Keep rolling, adjusting the twist if you need to, and sewing the base until the center is a little larger than the button center. Then trim the braid, leaving a tail. Thread this through the hole from the front of the button with the tails through the hole to the back. You can keep this center a little pronounced or push it into the hole. It will be more secure if pushed in flush. Now stitch the tails to the back of the button, trying to keep them close to the center. Overlap if you need to. It's a good idea to add a little bit of clear drying glue along the inner edge. Just take care that none goes through to the front. For this button, I'm going to make a couture style fabric covered back. I'm using one of our plastic button backs and plain cotton. You can see that the back does not fully cover the back of the button. That's okay.
I'm using our button template to measure and mark a circle. Cut this out and work a fine running stitch along the edge, then pop the button back inside so that the loop part faces down. Work fine stitches to pull in the fabric and make a smooth covering. This shows the loop part covered with the smooth fabric. The back is now first glued, then stitched with very small stitches along the back and through the soutache. Smaller stitches will be less visible. Trim and you're finished. This type of button is great for upcycling coats and adding a couture finish. They look fabulous in a single color too. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, do please click like and hit the subscribe button. And of course, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'll add the details of the materials I've used in the description box below. Thanks again. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.